So one kind of post that I see all the time on the dumb phone subreddit is the EDC or everyday carry. And I'm fascinated by all of these different posts because there's a lot of people that carry many different things for their digital minimalism journey. And I really applaud all of those creative posts and I find different devices thanks to them actually. So today I wanted to share with you what I carry with me as a digital minimalist, as somebody trying to move offline, and the dumb phones that I carry with me all the time and why. So hopefully you enjoy this video and give it a thumbs up or a subscribe if you are new to the channel. Here we talk about digital minimalism and dumb phones. I hope you enjoyed this video. So the first item that I want to talk about is the bag because every everyday carry should have what you carry all of this stuff with. Uh, with you. So the first thing is the bag. I use the Bellroy sling bag, which is about $80. And I really appreciate it because of two things. It's quite durable and because it's quite spacious. So the durability aspect is splash resistant, not full waterproof, of course, but if you're in the rain or if you are, you know, maybe you drop something and it splashes on it, uh, then, you know, you're not going to have many issues. It also has a little bit of padding. So if it drops from about your height or, you know, for some reason you, you kind of drop it, you know, and you're going around, then you're going to be fine. And most of your items will not have any issues unless they're extremely fragile. But I like it because it has quite a number of compartments. It has three main compartments and then within it, a couple of extra subdivisions. So I'm able to put all of my stuff in there. So now let's go over the two phones that I bring with me pretty much every day. And one of them I bring with me all the time, the other one only when I am working. So let's go over the Light Phone 2, which is my personal device. So if this is the first time that you come across the Light Phone 2, then you may know that it is a bit of a different device. It does have an e-ink screen. It's a little bit of a slower device. And this is my personal device. I use this device with US Mobile and a specific plan called the Light Plan, which is about $6 per month if you pay annually. And it has one gig of data and unlimited talk and text. This is enough for this device because it doesn't have apps that are consuming data all the time. The only app that consumes a lot of data is the podcasting app, and I don't actually use it on the go, uh, or at least I don't download episodes on the go. What I do is whenever I'm in Wi-Fi, I download all of the episodes, and then I listen to them on the go without going into my small amount of data each and every month, which is only one gig. But I have this device set up in the perfect way for me. It does have calendar, which syncs with my Google calendar. It does have directions if I need them in a pinch. And it does have music and podcast for whenever I want to listen to some music or whenever I want to listen to some podcasts. And it does have one final app that I have there, which is notes. And this is for when I had to jot down or remember something or even record an audio note. It does have the ability to do that. And because it's super simple and not demanding a lot of my attention, then I bring it with me every single day because it's my favorite device, because it's slower and it complements the low tech lifestyle that I want. I also like to protect my devices. So I bought a case for it, which is the lemur case. The lemur case is a wallet case and in its wallet compartment, it fits somewhere around five to seven cards. I have six in it and they're easily accessible. You also have the ability to have a cash on the other and because it has a strap. So I usually bring somewhere around 20, maybe $30 with me just in case I need them for whatever reason. And one card that I love is my Metro card. So I highly recommend that you get a physical card if it's available within your area because you don't have to rely on the ticket system for digital payments or digital tickets for the bus or the train whenever you come around it. So minimal device for my minimal needs. But whenever I need something for work, I bring a completely different device. In this case, I bring the Jelly Star. So the Jelly Star is my work phone. And whenever I have to go on work trips outside of my area, or sometimes I have to travel outside of the state, I bring it with me because you never know what's going to happen. And it's easier to just adapt with a micro smartphone than with a full fledged one and be tempted to use it more than I want to. What I like about the Jelly Star is that it has a tiny screen. So I'm not going to be loading Netflix or YouTube or any other streaming apps or social media apps because the experience is just not enjoyable. My main apps that I use are Niagara Launcher, which is a very minimal launcher. And you can also load 
O Launcher if you want an even more minimal experience, something that's super basic and only shows you the name of the app, not even the icon. I like Niagara Launcher because it has an alphabetical list. So whenever I think of an app that I have installed on my phone, then I just go to an alphabetical order. And it also had a, has a priority area, which the priority area only has apps that I use very frequently. And my frequently used apps are AntennaPod, Maps, Babbel, which is a language learning app, Libby, which is an audiobooks app, Bitwarden for passwords, Messages, Calibre, and Beeper. Calibre is a workout app, which I log all of my workouts as I'm trying to become a little bit stronger nowadays. And then everything else I have hidden or I have uninstalled. I don't even have a Play Store in this device because I believe that that is going to maybe motivate you to download apps. So what I do is I download every single app and once a month, I load the Play Store back in via the ADB, the Android Debug Bridge, and I update all of my apps. So once a month, I do this ritual, usually at the beginning of the month, I update all of my apps, and then I wait about another month in order to update them, unless something breaks tremendously and I have no way to actually you know, use the application and it's absolutely necessary. Then I load the application again, the Play Store and update it and then uninstall it pretty quickly, which, you know, that's the way I think every Android phone should be. You should load the apps that you want, you uninstall the Play Store and then you load it back up maybe once or twice, you know, every quarter in order to get the updates for the apps in order to maintain that security. Uh, I also cycle through another device, which is the Cat S22 Flip which is very similar to the Jelly Star, tiny screen with a flip phone style body. It still has Android, so it still has access to a lot of the apps out there, but because it's, the screen is very small, you're not going to be using it all the time. The only reason why I bring the Jelly more often is because of Android Auto, which the Cat S22 Flip does not have. And whenever I have to go on work trips and I need to connect it to a rental car, it's easier to do so with the Jelly Star then try to figure out a work around with the Cat S22 Flip. But that is about phones, the two phones that I use. Now let's go over what I call entertainment. So I do have a device for entertainment and this is the Playdate. So if you have never heard about the Playdate, it is a console device that is quite low tech for gaming when it comes to it. So something I like about the Playdate is that it is a very low tech entertainment slash gaming device. And I pull it out whenever I'm on plane rides or whenever I'm at the doctor's office because sometimes I get bored and I don't want to think or read. You know, I get tired a little bit. So it's kind of like a little bit of a distraction, but it's a low tech distraction. The games are not super sophisticated and you can put them away pretty much all the time. So maybe you play for five minutes or maybe 10 minutes in order to distract yourself, but because it's not a very intense experience and it's not something that is constantly demanding your attention, they're all black and white. It's not an LCD screen, but rather a reflective screen. So you need a decent amount of lighting conditions. Then it's not something that bothers me and it's not super addictive. This is quite an expensive device and it's quite quirky. There are other devices out there for low tech gaming that you can buy, but I personally like this one because it has a lot of updates and it has a lot of new developers that are actually putting a lot of care and intention into the games that they produce. So it's kind of like the new Game Boy, if you will but the games are way less involved than even back in the day. Uh, they're not super addictive and they're definitely, definitely quirky. Um, I personally enjoy it and have heard a lot of positive reviews from other people. Uh, I may do an update on this device quite soon because my initial video was quite basic and I wanted to give you guys an update on how I use this device. But I bring this device with me uh, every time I go out in case I have a bored moment at the bus or something like that. And I'm not listening to an audiobook or I'm not reading a book and I want to still be, you know, maybe not thinking, but just be distracted for a little bit with this device. Two final items that I bring with me are Bluetooth headphones, which I use the Nothing headphones. These connect both to my Jelly Star and also to my Light Phone. I do like their design, but that is not why I got them. I did not only get them because of the transparent design. I got them specifically because they're open ear 
headphones and you're able to listen to your content and also listen to your surroundings. Sometimes I bike, sometimes I take the transit, sometimes I walk. So depending on my circumstance, I want to make sure that I am listening to my surroundings in case something happens. So that is why I got this specific pair. The sound quality is superb. I will rate it probably an eight out of 10. Of course, taking into account that you're also able to listen to your surrounding. They do not get super loud and they do not have noise cancellation as far as I know. So they do have an equalizer that you can kind of play around and the case is quite useful. They charge via USB-C um, and, you know, it's quite fun to fidget around with the case sometimes because you're able to turn it with this knob right here. So I prefer these headphones over you know, kind of like over the ear headphones or things that go inside of my ear canal. So I personally prefer that, but you know, there are different Bluetooth headphones out there that you can add to your everyday carry. And the last item that I have, last but not least, is a charging cable. This charging cable is a three prong cable and I bring it with me because it does have all of the cables that we use nowadays. That's a micro USB, that's for my light phone, it does have USB-C for my Jelly Star, for my Playdate, and for my uh, Bluetooth headphones. So again, it does have all the chargers that I need. And if somebody asks me for a charger, like a lightning charger, it does also have that option. So if you have an iPhone and you're like, hey, can I use your charger? I'm able to use it in there. This is a USB-A, so sometimes it's quite hard to find those, especially in the newer cars, whenever I get a rental car, whenever I'm out of the area. Uh, but you know, most places you're able to find some sort of USB-A connection in order to charge your devices. And whenever I know it's going to be an extended period or a day that I'm not going to come back home, I bring a brick with me, a charging brick, in order to be able to plug in into a wall outlet. So now let's see how this looks on my everyday bag. So as you see right here, this is my bag fully packed and it's quite spacious. I still have a couple of extra compartments and everything is neat and organized and easily accessible, easily reachable without any, you know, delays. And I'm able to access everything I need and reply to phone calls or, you know, do whatever it is that I need for my day. Sometimes I do have to bring a larger backpack with my laptop. And what I do is I just have a regular backpack. I put my laptop in it and then I put this bag inside of that backpack uh, in order to have everything in one place. But that's about it for my everyday carry. If you have any questions about any of the devices that I showcased today, or you know you have any other questions about other devices that I have showcased in my reviews, make sure to let me know. And thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. I'll see you in the next video.